Hi, in this video we're going to look a little bit about how Google Classroom looks from a student perspective and then how what a student does is reflected back in the teacher perspective. So I've opened up Microsoft Edge. I've logged in as a student. I'm now going to proceed to the demo class. I also have this open in Google Chrome from the teacher's perspective. So this should look familiar to you. Back to the student. Notice I can see all the assignments that were posted. I'm going to go to the bottom. This is the first announcement that was posted. It's under general reminders. I have my links to both the YouTube video. So there it is. The motivational quote link. Notice my link opens in a new tab so that I don't lose the class. And because it's allowed, I can add comments. This could of course be restricted by the teacher. But because I trust my students, and also because this is limited to the class, this is not out on the internet. You need to, or it is out on the internet, but it's not out generally and available to anyone. It's restricted through classroom. I'll allow some comments. So the stu student makes a comment. If I flip over to my teacher view and scroll down, you can see that it identifies the student, the comment, and I can delete it here if, if it was something I didn't like or was inappropriate. Or I could also mute the user from right here. Now we covered muting in another video, but basically it's going to take away this individual user's right to comment and to have that visible by other members of the class. So if I think there's something inappropriate going on, the first thing I would do is mute the user. It's going to give you all the specifics. They can still submit their work, but other students won't see it. They can't reply to other classmates work and they can't comment. I could also delete the comment at the time, but perhaps I don't want to. And now if I go under students, you can see that this student has been muted. And I would have to come to students. I could email them here. Or I could select that student and unmute them if I wanted. So let's say that muting them was a mistake or that I've worked it out with the student and, and want to give them another try. Okay, so here this um, they can submit work that other students can see now. They can reply to their classmates' work and they can comment and, and post. Okay, so nice little control feature, uh, feature there to help you encourage class discussion, encourage students to communicate with you through the classroom, but also maintain some control over that. Now, as a teacher, I can, I can comment back. So very much like a comment section that you see at the bottom of an article on the internet or anything else, the difference being that this is confined to your space. Let me flip back to student view. And the student can now see that I've posted a message back to them. OK, this is my current events assignment. So the student can come in and they can click on here. They would see, you know, my instructions, the Google Doc that I gave them. There's not much here, but there could be. They can also click, it's a graded assignment. So this will just open it up under the category of graded assignments. And if there were more graded assignments, I would see them here. As a matter of fact, let me come back here for a second. Go back down to my announcements. I put another announcement in there just to demonstrate this actually. See, it says general reminders. Now I click on it and it's going to show me all my general reminders. I have the option to search by other topics that are available. So if I wanted to see all my grading assi graded assignments, I can do that. And currently there's one. We'll add another one uh, shortly. Let me get back to my demo class. Okay, so I'll scroll up here to my first assignment. 
There's an option in the upper right simply to copy the link. As previously, the topic is listed here, and if I were to click on it, I would see all graded assignments listed with the option to search by other topics. Here's the file that was provided. Now, I want to remind you that this particular file was provided for instruction, so this is not something that I want students to change, so they were just given rights to view it. I can add a class comment if I like right here. This goes to the whole class. But what I'd like to do instead right now is I'd like to go do the assignment. So I can either click on it here, current events, or I can click open. And now I'm in the assignment itself. I still have, have access to that file that I made available. But because I did not give the students a starter assignment, something that, that they were to complete that I had started, they're going to have to either add something from their Google Drive or a link or a file from their computer so they could have typed this up in Microsoft Word or something and given it to me as an attachment here simply by browsing to it. So I'll select files from my computer, um, desktop, and let's just say it's a text file that they're going to send this notes file. They can attach it that way, or they can go to their drive, etc. And there it is. Or, they can create something live. They can create a doc, slides, sheets, or drawings directly from Google Drive. Now, if they'd gone into their space and done this, they could have attached it, that wouldn't have been a problem. But the advantage of using this create feature is that they don't have to worry about the organization. So if I click create a document right now, this is going to be stored properly in their Google Drive, in this assignment, in this class, in classrooms. So there's no um, organizational issues. Everything is nice and neat and well organized. My current events uh, review. And obviously I've got some some things to change here, but I could type and, and do my assignment. It is Google Drive, so it's saving constantly. Let's take a look at this from a teacher's perspective while it's still open. So I'm going to flip back to my version of classroom. You can see here that um, here's the assignment. There are six that are not done. If I click on that, I can see my student listed here. And now that they have two attachments, I can enter that area and see both attachments. So this is a text file. So that's not a native format for Google Docs. So if I click on it, I can view it. It's possible that they could upload some type of file that was not viewable from within this environment, but you could download it, and if you had the application installed on your computer, you'd be able to see it. The other one is the Google Doc that they're creating. And I can open that, and I can see their real-time progress on that. And I can say, I can even comment on that. So I can highlight, um, add a comment, and say... They can respond to this from, from their perspective. And I'll just highlight this one and give them another comment. Okay, saving in real time. So I'm just going to wait till it saves and close it. Flip back to the student view. When they enter that Google Doc, They'll see my comments over to the right. Clicking on a particular um, comment brings it to the foreground. So now I can see that this, this comment is associated with this text, while this comment is associated with this text. And of course, they have a reply button right here.
Okay, so one way to communicate back and forth on this document through Google Classroom and through Google Docs. Now, a couple of features from the student side we haven't looked at yet. From this area here, of course, a student can comment. But this, from this area, let me cancel out a second. This is a private comment. So this is a discussion between teacher and student where this is a class comment that would be visible to everybody. So you have to distinguish between the two. When the student is finished, they simply click the Turn It In button. And that's an indication that they are done. Notice there's an unsubmit. If they make a mistake, they can unsubmit it up until the due date. Continue working on it. And if I flip back to the teacher's view, Of course, you'll see that all updates, such as their replies, etc., are visible. I can go in as a teacher now in this particular assignment, and I can assign a grade. So I'm going to say that I've looked at everything and I've given this student a 95. Notice that that student is selected, and I can select all of the students that are done if I want with this checkbox, or I can select individual students. In this case, it's one and the same. I can also sort by status, so I can sort by last name, first name, or status, meaning done or not done. And then I can return this to the checked student. I'll give them a comment. And return that 95 to them. Now before I go back and view this as a student, notice there's also an email link here, so I can select this student. And if I want to, I could send them an email as well to their Gmail account. Now let me flip one more time back to the student, and you'll see that they've now received a grade, but that they can resubmit also. If, if this was a poor grade and you were allowing them to resubmit, they could resubmit right up until the due date. So you want to consider that in your grading uh, scheme. Perhaps if you don't want to allow resubmits, you're not going to do the grading until, until the due date has been reached. But if you want to give them some feedback and allow them to improve on their work, you could do that by grading early. Okay, let me flip back to teacher version here. And I want to create another assignment. So I'll do that here. Now I've quickly filled out the basic information, but I want to show you under topic. Because we've talked about it, but we haven't done it. If you don't have a topic, you could always create one on the fly. There we go. And perhaps I just realized that I want to give them the story starter. So I want to give them a document, and I want them each to get a copy of this document. So I'm going to have to create that first. So let me save this as a draft. And now... Probably the safest way to do this is to go back to classes and to use this folder. And this is going to get me right into my demo class space. So now when I create a new document, it's in the correct space. So I've created the document, I've named it Writing Prompt 1, it is saved. I'm going to close my drive and return to my classroom. And you can see that the current, uh, the writing prompt one is here. So I can edit that. I'm going to add my writing prompt one. But when I assign it, I want to make sure that each student get his, gets its his or her own copy. Now it's important to do this now because this is not something you're going to be able to edit later. You would have to recreate the assignment. And let's say that everything else is good, so I just now assign it. The assignment appears in my classroom. I flip to student view. When I go back, they've received the assignment. When I open it and click on writing prompt, they get their own version that they can work on. So they complete their assignment. They can turn it in directly from here if they'd like. And that's it.